and welcome back to the channel of motorbike nonsense. Our quick story, a man from Triumph dropped this off at my front door about 8 o'clock this morning. It's a new Triumph Tiger 1200. This is the Rally Explorer version. And then half an hour later I got a WhatsApp message from Triumph's PR saying, can you not ride it yet? Because we're not sure you're insured. But good news, a couple of hours later, and apparently I'm insured on it, my reply was, I've got crash bars, I don't need insurance. But anyway, I'm going to take you for a quick first impressions ride. I've literally ridden it three miles from my house to the dogging lay-by. And I can already tell you, <laughs> this thing f***ing <laughs> rips. It is brilliant. But anyway, that's just the engine. I haven't really got much of a plan other than to take it onto some twisty roads, once I can get the unfeasibly long side stand up, and smash the granny out of it, by which I mean uh, ride it progressively and sensibly. Let's go. Right, I've got to pick the kids up from nursery in about an hour, so um, unfortunately my route takes 50 minutes, so uh, let's try not to bend the space-time continuum, but yeah, first ride on the Tiger 1200, and uh, I can already tell you this feels like Triumph's best motorbike to date. There's something about it that just feels inherently right. As I said, this is the Rally Explorer model, which is essentially the most expensive version of this. Rally means it's got the 21 inch front wheel, it's got longer suspension travel, it's got more off-roady setup. Hmm. I think it's Metzler Carew tyres on this. I haven't looked, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a rush. But yeah, I think this is £19,100 as a base bike. This one has got top box on the back, pannier rack. I told them to keep the panniers because I don't really want the extra width while I'm testing it. And uh, yeah, the 30 litre tank is the first downside that I noticed this bike. It came with the full tank of fuel, thank you Triumph. Um, would have lost a star if it didn't, I'm joking. But that does mean you've got 30 kilos of weight quite high up and I spent all day yesterday my day off having a oh, wicked blast on my KTM 1290 Super Adventure S the latest one the 2021 model and that's got a 23 litre tank so it's always going to be a bit lighter than this but uh, that's all carried down low but I've kind of got used to that it's down in tanks by your feet and saddlebag tanks this is also carried up high and you really notice it yeah this new version is some massive amount lighter than the previous version. I think this is 240 kilograms wet. Uh, for the entry level ones, this can be a lot more than that, but still a lot lighter than the outgoing Tiger 1200, which was a bit of a lardy boy uh, or girl. I don't really apply genders to vehicles because I think that's weird. And anyone who calls a motorbike he or she should probably be in prison. Um, but yeah. The old one, my dad had one, Tiger 1200, he's still got one, he's trying to sell it, go on eBay and try and buy it, it's a white one, uh, in Norwich, Norfolk. And yeah, he's selling it because it's just too heavy for him, he's uh, in his late 60s and he just gets out of his garage and like, oh no, the weight's up high, I don't like it, and he's got a BMW R1250 RT and he's, instead the weight's lowered down. And the whole point of that story is that the BMW GS is this bike's main rival, and that does carry its weight low down, obviously if that box is twin, it's all down by your feet, really low and the fuel is still on top, but the overall COG is lower. And this, yeah. When you're pushing it round, it does feel heavy and top heavy, but as you might have seen from my slightly overconfident flick the side to side there, this does feel exceptionally nimble. Once you're on the move, it's just moving it around my road earlier, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tall bloke and I'm not that comfortable paddling this around, so you need to be a bit careful when it's got a full tank. But that's probably not what you came to see, lovely bluebells. I'm going to get to my local fast-ish roads and show you why I already like this a lot. I might be able to give you a quick sample of it here. <laughs> it's the fact! It's almost terrifyingly quick. 150 horsepower. Yeah, it's got that um, cross-plane triple, but the new 1160 version. So I think they've taken a speed triple RS engine, cross-planed it. They've probably done some other stuff to it. I can't remember the boring stroke and everything of it. But yeah, it's got instant shove. 
but still it's got that triple turbine smoothness to it so the power does build and it's not like the Tiger 900 where you've got this completely flat torque curve and it feels like the power is flat as well so it's sort of a featureless experience when you open the throttle what you get with 3000 revs is pretty much what you get 7000 on this it builds and as it builds it's feeling like it's trying to do exciting stuff really it's yeah it's alive this bike it feels like it's up on its toes and i can't wait to give it some it also sounds fantastic it's almost got something of a v4 barble that's a good word about it it's got a I don't know, it doesn't sound like a triple, it doesn't sound anything like a triple at low revs, it's got none of that whininess and I love the sound of a triple but this, this sound fits an adventure bike better in my head obviously because I'm used to riding two cylinder adventure bikes but yeah, it's also really comfy standing up, it feels natural between your legs I saw the launch of this, no one was razzing it off-road, 44 teeth, Chris Northover and everyone yeah, this feels like it'd be a pretty good companion off-road. Easily adjustable manual screen. You don't have to push it out and pull it up. You just literally, you can finger it up and finger blast it like that. Yeah, it's um, it's been properly thought through this. You get the sense that BMW, uh, BMW, whoops. You get the sense that Triumph wants this to be its flagship bike. And it kind of shows. I still don't like your fiddly cursor block, but hey, I'm going to stop whinging about that because you'd get used to it if you owned one of these, wouldn't you? Right, onwards. What's the low speed balance like? Yeah, really good. Let's go! Woo! <laughs> so fast! Um, I don't just giggle at bikes when they're fast, it's when they make me feel good as well. And this engine feels exceptional. Right, I'm going to cut, get some twisty roads, and I'll see you in a second. Man, this thing, this thing is really, really impressive. I just chucked it around some bends back there off camera. And it's got 21 inch front wheel. And it requires less effort to turn than my KTM does with a 1290 front wheel. There are skinnier tyres on this than my KTM at the front, but yeah, oh, the chassis feels really, really good. And the engine's got power for days. I, I reckon this is as fast as my KTM. Now, even in sport mode, um, even being quite aggressive with the throttle, it's not actually lifting the front wheel, which is probably what most people want. And I still feel that Triumph could be a little bit more lax with their electronics to let people have some more fun. But I guess the real target for this bike is the GS. There's been a year or two since I rode the 1250 GS, and I love that bike. Don't get me wrong, I see why it's so popular. I almost bought one. Uh, Stonking, that 1250 engine. What it doesn't have though, really, is character. I like the noise of it. But it kind of still feels as if it's been nicked from Manfred von Richthofen's Fokker triplane. Uh, it's just a, I don't know, it's not a sexy engine, it's a good engine. This sounds like my Triumph marketing tool, but this engine has so much more character to it. It's got so much more about it. It's just, oh, it is saucy, this bike. <laughs> I hate to be a massive cliche journalist, but yeah, it's got go everywhere. And gives you confidence. It's so quick. Uh, the brakes are very good. You do sense the uh, the mass that it's trying to stop when you clamp on them. And I'm used to the anti-dive from my KTM. But yeah, this thing, this thing is sodding good. So much so, I'm going to risk missing nursery pickup time and go on my long loop, which has got some slightly smaller roads. Let's wait for him because I don't want to crash it. Yeah, seat height's pretty high. <laughs> he says putting his foot down. And putting my foot down on an oven, uneven surface, rather. You have to be a bit prepared because the weight are up high. And I'm six foot three, and I just found that a little bit challenging back there. But again, there's lower seats, and you don't have to buy the off road one, which is higher. And you don't have to buy the one with the 30 litre tank. Yeah. Let's do some more. Ah. By the way, it reckons I've got a 250 mile range from this tank of fuel, and I can't imagine uh, I'm getting loads of MPG from it because I've just been spanking it. Oh my goodness! Another good thing, I've just put the screen up to its highest setting, 
It's got 60 miles an hour. No way. No. Triumph. Triumph has made the first motorbike screen on the Vintage Bike, which completely clears my head at six foot three. That's so quiet. Yeah, uh, my KTM, I need to get a little flippy uppy thing on the top because uh, it hits the top of my head. This, unless I sit like this, if I slouch like normal, that screen clears the air off the top of my helmet. I'm riding in silence. Oh, this would be a good YouTube bike so you could hear all my prattling. Oh dear, okay. Um, I had pretty high expectations for this bike, to be honest. I watched some of the initial reviews from the launch earlier in the year. And I thought, oh, they're all having a great time, but you know, it's one of the first launches after Christmas, they're going somewhere nice, they're doing off-roading. Yeah, nah, it's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Oh dear. Am I going to get bike purchase regret and buy my KTM? I'm not sure, because that does do massive third gear wheelies at 70 miles an hour when you accelerate, and fourth gear ones, this doesn't. Probably would if I turned everything off, but I don't want to turn everything off, I want some backup. But yeah, engine lovely, chassis super lovely on this. Uh, it feels really good when it's lent over. And look, there's the GS rider. It's just uh, done everyone at that junction. Let's explore, because I'm on a Tiger Explorer. Explorist. <laughs> that engine is so naughty. It's so lovely to have a top end proper rush. Yeah, okay, so, sorry, less childish giggling. This bike's so fast, it is properly good. Now, the suspension, you can adjust all the riding modes and adjust the suspension firmness. At the moment, I've just got it in sport mode and it feels fine, to be honest. The seat seems pretty comfy, but I've got this bike for about 10 days and I'm gonna have a chance to do some big motorway journeys on it. So, I'll be able to report back in my full review on the comfort of this. What the hell? I wish I'd found this road before. This is great. But yeah, this, this bike responds well to being ridden pretty hard. The brakes work really well and it's just, uh, it's got a really lovely noise to it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, this, this, this will uh, put a smile on your face, shall we say, if you enjoy riding in a sporty sort of way. Little addendum, I've just put the bike in off-road mode and you have to stop to do that because it turns some of the traction control down and ABS off and things like that. There's Off-Road Pro which does turn things fully off, I'm just in an off-road, so it's got your back a bit. Uh, it has a little spring icon that says preload is adjusting and I was sitting here with my foot barely on the floor in sport mode and feel the seat height getting lower, so actually it's like an access mode, <laughs> stick it in off-road mode. <laughs> and uh, the seat height gets a bit lower. Uh, I put it in off-road mode because I fancy to do some childish skids on some gravel without falling off. But I mean, uh, it does that thing of spinning and gripping, spinning and gripping, which I guess is what all bikes would do. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> childish fun. I've not ridden the Triumph that has really encouraged childish fun. Let's check out the steering lock. I'm going the wrong way. Fine. It wasn't a U-turn, but it was a pretty tight turn. Well, I'm completely lost. I'm completely lost. I'm in love with this engine, man. But anyway, back to me saying the outro. Okay, cool. I'm probably going to sign off now because I'm going to turn my GoPros off and keep riding. Triumph first impressions of your new Toka 1200 Rally Explorer are... Oh, yeah, it's very, very, very good so far. Um, it's not going to be one of those bikes that sits in your garage, used when you, you know, when you thought, oh, I should probably take the bike. You're going to want to take this for a thrash. It kind of, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's exciting. Yeah. I think if Triumph have done all the other stuff, the stuff that you want, the boring stuff, the practical things, which I won't really know until I've lived with it for a bit, that will be the mark of whether this can out GS the GS. So yeah, it's too early to say, but in terms of dynamic riding and having fun on it, the GS is a very dynamic bike, but the engine on this trounces it. <laughs> it just flat out smashes it. This is up there with the 1290 Super Adventure engine in terms of fun.
wicked thing. Right, anyway, hopefully this was really helpful. So I just wanted to get my thoughts down on uh, digital parchment. Uh, hit like if it has been helpful. Do subscribe to the channel because that massively helps me out uh, getting to do things like that. Uh, I'm going to go this way. And I will see you next time. I've got a full review of that. A full review? I've got a full review of that Aprilia Touareg coming up. Uh, another excellent adventure bike that's half the price of this, but still a lot of fun. Uh, I'll have a full review of this, and I've got a Super Duke GT review in the works as well. So um, uh, stay tuned and keep watching or something.